please. Thank you. Good. I had seen, um, I think, 36 persons online or oh, 26, but then <laughs> I guess they are probably caught up uh, having lunch or tea break. Yes, tea break. So uh, you're welcome to the Africa Knowledge Initiative, the groundwork session. And uh, my name is Seslaus Obunaya, and I'm the Wikimedia in residence for the Africa Knowledge Initiative. And with me today is Ayla Hadaflaud, <laughs> who is a co-lead at Wiki in Africa. And also with me is Ruby D. Brown from Open Foundation West Africa. And uh, we had hoped <laughs> to have had um, Euphemia Wandu, but unfortunately, I think it's 4.45 a.m. in Nigeria. So she definitely would still be in bed. And we had also hoped that uh, Candy would have uh, filled in for her because they ran the campaign in collaboration with Wikimedia Botswana. But Candy came down with a flu yesterday. Yes, so she isn't even here at the conference for today. But then here we are. Uh, that doesn't, of course, downplay the amount of work they put in uh, in the campaign. So uh, the logos, of course, if I were to go around thanking everybody, would be definitely more than <laughs> what you see on the screen because we, we, we had a lot uh, of community organizers from Africa and then from diaspora. So just to give us an insight about what African Knowledge Initiative is, it's basically a project that was um, conceived through a partnership that um, exists between the Wikimedia Foundation, the African Union, and African no Filter, which uh, is about creating content and knowledge, you know, in order to fill the content and knowledge gap that exists on the internet about Africa. Of course, using the Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects. So why Wikipedia projects or Wikimedia projects generally? Uh, like most of us know, when you go online to search for anything, you barely go through the first page without seeing a wiki, except it's hasn't been documented yet. So it was easy, you know, since we are what vying for visibility here. And then the AKI, like I fondly call it, um, kicked off around three African Union holidays, namely the Africa Youth Day on November 1st, 2022, and then the what we now call Africa Environment Wiki Focus uh, campaign, which of course is the environment campaign uh, for 3rd of March 2023. And then lastly, the Africa Day on 25th of May 2023. Despite these holidays being attached to days, we were on the roll all the whole month. In fact, some campaigns had two months <laughs> due, to some, <laughs> due to some unforeseen uh, circumstances. And then why did the African Union and the Wikimedia Foundation, you know, decide to, and the African Field decide to go on this journey. So uh, most times when you go online, you maybe search for something around Africa. You would be shocked to know that most of the stuff weren't written or put there by Africans. Maybe some backpacker travels to South Africa, <laughs> goes to the safari, spends two weeks, and goes back to God knows where and then puts up a blog about South Africa, you know. So we, we have seen this sort of um, projected, um, it has projected the, the, the continent and Africans wrongly, you know, globally. And uh, there is serious misrepresentation of Africa. So the AKI seem, um, you know, thought it would be nice to hand back the narrative or the pen to Africans to be able to tell their own stories. So, of course, who is involved? The Wikimedia Foundation, the African Union, and uh, the Africa No Filter. 
So to actually do uh, uh, this project, we had the bright idea to engage what we call implementing partners. Now the implementing partners, uh, I think we selected these implementing partners after an application round, I think about 30 very strong organizations <laughs> made their submissions. But then we have a short-term goal around content creation for the project. And as such, we had to look out for organizations whose short-term goals align with what AKI uh, is trying to achieve. And that was how we landed um, Wiki Vibrance for the Africa Youth Day 2022, but then they collaborated with um, Wikimedia Botswana, a user group. And then for Africa Environment Day, we had a, a marriage between Wiki in Africa and Wikimedia Cote d'Ivoire. <laughs> yeah, and then for the Africa Day, we have um, OFWA, our Open Foundation West Africa. We had had AFLIA to collaborate with OFWA, but then, just like I said, short term goals of the AKI didn't really align with what AFLIA was trying to achieve through the project. They had a nice idea about, um, you know, collating a repository for Afro glam and cultural heritage. It was really nice, but then for the moment, it didn't really fit what we're trying to achieve, maybe in the nearest future, possibly, but it was a nice idea, I, I must confess. So with that, we had to forge ahead with um, um, Ofwa on that project. But then I know why we chose uh, the implementing partners. And then the implementing partners, in, in turn, uh, did um, work with some local organizers. We didn't have anything to do with how they chose the local organizers. But then I'm very curious to know, you know what checklists they used, what ticked the boxes for them. So with that, I welcome Isla to let us know how they chose their local organizers for the African Environment Day campaign. Thanks, Soslaus. Um, so, it's not too loud. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it oh, to me? <laughs> Heckled in the background. Yeah. Um, so, how we decided to, I've, I don't want to speak for the other two campaigns because I feel like there, there were different um, ways that they, they did it. But what we did is we put out two um, calls for uh, applications. So one was to be a volunteer uh, juror. So you could become on the jury who would then, my voice is going, select, um, select the, the uh, micro grantees. Yep. And then we put a call out to um, communities or groups so you didn't have to be an affiliate, you didn't have to be, you just had to be like a group of friends or whoever with a good idea to um, apply. And the, for us, it was about making sure that um, new people had an opportunity to get involved around something very specific, but also that maybe non-Wikipedians as well who wanted to, um, who saw, who were very passionate about um, the environment in Africa and wanted to also contribute their knowledge or their, their experiences. So uh, we did the micro grant call and then we had a very set criteria. We had over 60 applications um, and we had uh, by the end of, um, of the, um, by the end of the, the choice that the independent jury made, uh, there were 17 that we um, whittled it down to yeah. so that that was probably I mean, there was a lot of there was Tough choice. and and we had a short list I think of about 25 which we could also see some which were, could be merged because they were very close in kind of either um, thematic kind of alignment or they were regionally very close so they could work together um, and so that was that uh, we also made a very clear a very clear decision not to have um, any prizes we didn't want to we didn't want people to um, try and game the system in order to um, 
to to get money for for that prize. So yes, they would get money for to host the events, but not offer prizes. And because of the alignment with Wiki Loves Africa and the theme being so close, we also made a very um, very specific decision that there wouldn't be photo walks and there wouldn't be an images thing because if they'd wanted to do that they could have applied through wiki loves africa so it was also very strategic we didn't want people to double up yeah. the effort and to confuse the the issues because wiki loves africa was a specific partner in that um i hope that answers the question of course but in the end we had 17 communities who were who were part of the micro grant yeah yeah Thank you so much, Ayla. And uh, you know, uh, as as much as sh she made it look easy, uh, scrolling through 60 applications for the micro grantees, I had to go through 30 to get implementing partners, and I lost sleep because <laughs> you would have to start checking the antecedents of these organizations, what sort of projects had they handled in the past, and things like that. So it, it was indeed. Uh, not an easy fit. Thank you so much, Ayla. And for you, Ruby, you uh, handled the Africa Day campaign. So what were you looking out for in local organizers? Yeah, thank you so much, Seslas, for the question. I think, um, yeah, it was very interesting projects that we did. And looking at the applications that came through, they were about um, close to 30 applications that came through. And some of the things that we're looking out for people who wanted to implement the campaign was the experience, um, whether they've had little or some, some kind of organizing campaign because it's very important um, to the outcome. We also look at the language diversity. Um, mm -hmm. So we, didn't, we also looked at a way that we could bring in different languages. And one of the things that we also seen as a challenge in the African community is when you talk to people about collaborating, it's difficult. Yes, it's, it's, it's a, a very nice thing to say, but there's a problem when you say collaborate. They don't understand what you're talking about. And the issue even become worse when you're giving the fund to one person and you are asking the person to collaborate Mm -hmm. with this group of people. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't want those kind of issues to erupt out. So we try to, as much as possible, um, make sure that everyone is empowered, have some kind of funding. So even if we're asking three people to collaborate, we make sure that we are sharing the funds to the three people and everyone mm -hmm. can be empowered to manage their own funds. And so that, these are some of the strategies that we we used and selected and it helped us I think it, it was really helpful because if we had given it to one person say collaborate the work would be on one person True. and the other group might not really work and might not even bring the kind of results that we are looking at so by doing that we realized that we're able to get let's say the PG community to do PG mm -hmm. we're able to get the account community to do a tree Fanti to do Fanti, Igbo to do Igbo. So that kind of diversity um, was seen in, in, in the campaign. And I think it was, I mean, we had a, a team that reviewed um, the applications to give people the opportunity. I think we were a little bit fair and we gave a lot of people the opportunity to participate in the campaign, which was really good. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions, yeah, but yeah, these yeah. are the that's, things. <laughs> that, that actually answers, you know, why um, uh, you probably would need uh, a community that has experience, no matter how small, running an event or being part of yeah. a Pan-African campaign or a regional campaign, as the case may be. And, you know, I, I, I didn't know the quality and quantity of work that we did until I sat down to start collating the general project report. I, I was amazed. <laughs> I was amazed <laughs> because why we, of course, themed it um, Africa thingy. We had Haiti, our siblings in diaspora. We had Afro crowd. There was Wikimedia Haiti, there was Af Afro crowd. There was also Nasir, Wikimedia from Switzerland. Switzerland. 
Yeah. Yes. So these guys brought some dynamics that I didn't see coming, you know. But then when we had um, Africa Day and Afro Crowd held um, editing training on Wikipedia and stuff like that, I was blown away. Haiti came in with Wikidata and stuff, you know, and then when I see Wikipedia, I was like, wow. Because as, as, as much as we want Africans being in front of this, you know, there are other persons who are enthusiasts of African knowledge, you know, and they're highly welcome to join us. They are highly welcome to join us. Someone like uh, Florence Devoir, she's always there supporting us, you know, helping to put new communities through. And just like uh, what Ayla mentioned about new uh, participants, we had a lot of them. First time editors. And with that, I will just show you what success looks like on the project. <laughs> I didn't know we did up to this. Talk about 47 local organizing communities on the continent and beyond. You know, and at least 53 events were recorded across Africa and diaspora, and 44 programs recorded on the dashboard. So that's amazing. And by the time we looked at the number of editors and participants, 1,467 from the three campaigns, and mostly new people mostly new people. You know how we talk about Africa having this young population that could be impacting Wikipedia or Wikimedia movement in the near future. I saw that firsthand here and it was amazing. It was amazing to see. And then over 11 million words added across the uh, respective campaigns, 16,210 references added. And then we had 12,530 new articles created across Wikipedia, Wiktionary, Wikicode. I wish Candy was here because her community, they were heads on with the Wikicode, you know, and it was interesting. And they, they had interesting number of female contributors too, which sort of, uh, you know, just uh, things up because all of them wanted to do something on Wikicode. And it was amazing to see. And then we had about um, 1,800 articles improved and edited. And by the time we were tracking the respective campaigns and all that, we've noticed about 26 million, over 26 million views on the newly created and improved articles. And of course, the Wikidata revisions were 52,000 total. Okay, go ahead. Wikipedia Wiktionary, mostly. And then uh, we also saw on uh, Wikiquote. But then, you know, our, our dashboard is still a bit tricky. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit tricky, but OK. Sorry, so it was, there were quite a few. It depended from yeah. uh, space to space, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mauto. I was told off. Um, <laughs> so it depended on from space to space. Yes. So with us, it was because the content was specifically very like um, about data and statistics, but yes. also about filling in the um, the lack of information that exists. Um, it was very Wikipedia heavy True. and Wikidata heavy, but um, we also quite ha had quite a high uploads but it was all about documentation of the the events and things to commons yeah but then the wiki loves africa which was aligned as uh, weather and and um and climate was six was 14,000 13,000 yeah. images separately yeah. to this so that you know so it was all about aligning yeah. different things so we also ran a, came, a campaign on ESA, which also then added um, to the descriptions Wikidata. to images, to Wikidata. Yeah. So yeah, I think it ranged, yeah. It ranged, but, but was, mostly on the us, Wikipedia, the, yeah, like she rightly but said. But with the, with, the, with the Wikipedia, it was also very much uh, local, Spike, local languages. Spike. Yeah, local languages um, too. Because the, there was so much information missing on that, on that topic specifically. Sorry. And then, okay, just to add, interestingly, uh, Dumi, we noticed during the environment campaign that I think out of uh, 54 African countries, only three.
had climate change report on Wikipedia, and that changed. You know, we have now separate, uh, article. separate articles on you know regional countries, and you know we we hope that gets better with time. But it, it was really amazing to see uh, so, some some communities like uh, I think Wikimedia Botswana defending their article on climate change <laughs> on English Wikipedia, and they succeeded. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's that's impressive because we figured out how to do Wikipedia in the continent, but Wikidata is still a problem. Um, we're not tagging the article, you're tagging the articles that we are creating, and that makes discovery of the knowledge that we have in the, about the continent on projects very difficult to demonstrate. So this is good work, well done. Thank you so much, Dumi, thank you. Uh, Ruby, you wanted to say something? Oh, I think they've said it all. Okay, they've said it all. Um, I just wanted to add that um, okay. also the campaigns happen in different timelines, so yes. the, they were not overlapping. Of course I not, would have thought. of course yeah, not. So, yeah. Of course not, so we, we, we tracked independently, you understand, like for, um, What's it called? Africa Day. We tracked from 1st November to December, around first week or second week, you know. And then from March to May to, to April for Africa environment or thereabout. And then from May to June for Africa Day. And yeah, they were just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, there were just um, three, but then, you know, just like what you mentioned about Wikidata, so for Igbo Wikimedia user group, we saw the same problem, which made us, uh, you know, have a Wikidata hub separate. We have Igbo Wikimedia Wikidata hub, and these guys were very present on this uh, project, and it was amazing seeing how fast they were able to pick up. I don't know if you know, but one of our community members is a community specialist for Wikimedia Commons and Wikidata with the foundation. So we had that juice and we squeezed. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, it was, I mean, all these um, awesome numbers. And, you know, what actually uh, made me glad, or what specifically made me was how a lot of new people were willing to learn and contribute. You know, it started in, in Rwanda because we had um, a post Ndaba event, and I think Rwanda Mountain Tea was very gracious to us. They gave us the space, they sponsored the post Ndaba event for Africa Youth Month, and we had about. And good tea. And good tea, very important. <laughs> Very important, good tea, they gave us croissant and uh, helped us move people around. So when we were planning that post Ndaba editing, we didn't think, I mean, many people would show, we're just thinking of maybe, okay, 10, 13, but 48 young people showed up from around Rwanda, you know, and Rwanda Mountain Tea, God bless them, they were really helpful. They waited, we finished, they dropped people at their closest bus stops home. They were that gracious, they were that gracious. And we did a photo work at their factories and we were able to curate something out of it and they have an article on. And these guys have been doing amazing. It really pains me that, you know, there are amazing things happening across Africa and nobody's reading. Who knows about the Mombasa tea um, m market here? That's the biggest, the biggest. So these guys have been going to Mombasa within awards. So we, you know, photographed all those things and were able to point that out on English Wikipedia and the article is there now. So lots of things the African Initiative really uncovered. And with that, we really hope really hope that the energy goes on, you know, to 
perhaps next year, next two years, next three years. And there are many African Union holidays, I think over 16 of them. And we, 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 we have the, the dream to develop interesting campaigns around this because the AU archives, we barely scratched it. Barely. One has about over 65,000 items. One has about 10,000 plus. The other, in total, we have like over 100,000 things. And I don't think we used up to 3%. Are they even digitized? Yes, they are digitized and <laughs> they're not very easily accessible. So interesting fact. So when I was uh, given access uh, by the knowledge management team at the AU, I told them, ah, this is nice, but it's not open. Right? And they were like, uh, what do you mean it's not open? <laughs> you know, the, the door is wide open. I told them, no, it's not open like the way we Wikimedians love our things. Like, oh, okay, okay. So what do we do? So I pointed out at least how the filters should be on the three um, archives they shared with us. And by the time we were running the African environment, they had affected the recommendations on one. Yes. <laughs> so the other two, yeah, the other two. Exactly, exactly. The, the other two archives, I'm hoping that maybe by the time we get into the next uh, round of the campaigns, they probably would come in line. Ruby saw one. Before, before that one you saw, it was everywhere. But now you have the archive grouped in books, magazines, research, and whatnot. Now it's easily accessible. So while we had all those as uh, primary um, sources, we also got um, secondary sources. I think African environment specifically worked from um, secondary sources that were very, very, very interesting to see when we looked at the, at the results. So with that, I will say thank you to the implementing uh, partners. Uh, you guys were amazing because, oof, you were amazing because <laughs> it was hard work. It was hard work because, oof, if I, if I, were, if I were in this alone, I think I would have caved, but I had you guys, you know, supporting from every um, angle, and that sort of made me uh, to feel encouraged and see the project to the end. So thank you so much, and shout out to all the local organizers. Once again, Afro Crowd, they were amazing, all the way from the US and the Caribbean. Wikimedia, AT, Noasi, uh, Wikipedia, they were amazing, they were amazing. Thank you. And if you have uh, further questions, please, or recommendations, by the way, because this was a pilot, right? This was just the uh, first year. So if you have recommendations, comments, or reactions, or questions, please feel free. I just want to say something. Sure. Um, it was an, an amazing experience, I have to say. It was really good. It's not like we haven't done um, regional campaigns before. But it was, what was very interesting about it, I'm not going to say special because it was, it was hard work, but was about bringing, um, specifically bringing new people on. Yeah. Um, but of course with that comes like huge challenges. And we did a lot of um, onboarding, a lot of kind of support from um, a lot of kind of, a lot of online, a lot of internal, um, support for the organizers, but also for new people. Um, we did get some wonderful people within the community about how to write, yeah. specifically how to write environmental articles. You can't just go like, you know, you have to back it up with all of the, the sure. things. And there was some wonderful, um, that, that was absolutely fabulous. But I think what was also amazing was, well, wasn't amazing, it was part of the plan, was to put we did surveys of the organizers and we did surveys of the participants. Yes. And one of the things that we included in the participant survey was things that I don't know if we've ever really interrogated before, which is like, how easy is it for you to continue editing? 
as an African? Like, what, you know, what are your pain points? And so we had, I can, I'll, I can supply the survey if anyone's interested, but it was one of the first times we found out, like, you know, we know that data is expensive in Africa, but we, know, we don't know how much that actually um, impacts the um, return or the ability for people to actually work at home on articles and go leave the event and then continue the work. Um, and it's not, it doesn't really happen in Africa and it was, it is definitely one of the, absolutely the biggest thing is the cost of data, but also the, the lack of technology for people to then go home with and they just don't have that setup. So when we ask them also like, you know, did you need somebody with you to keep keep helping you? And they were like, no, we don't need that. We just need the technology and the data. Yeah. So it was a very interesting um, exercise in finding out actually what are the real pain points. We all kind of think we know, but sometimes it's good just to back it up with the evidence. True. And thanks, Sis. Pleasure, interesting mention there, Ayla. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. So I want to quickly speak about um, our experience as an implementing partner. So um, when we started um, giving out the grants for local organizers to uh, do their campaigns and their workshop in their various um, organizations, I realized that some of them were eager for what we were um, given them. They saw this as an opportunity to you know, reach out to people and talk to them about Wikipedia. And yeah. Some even went ahead to um, pre-finance yeah, workshops. Mm. We even told, yeah, we even told some of them, you just give us about two or three days. We are going to, you know, uh, provide you with everything. They said, no, we want to do it this day, this time. So I was just happy that even before the project, people were so eager, yes. you know, to contribute to um, this campaign. And I'm very happy about that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Eugene. Yeah. Yes, do me. Yeah, I, I, I think that. I just want to say that this this makes me happy to hear the work that's happening because, for, at least from my point of view, we have been looking at activation of communities and organizers and editors in Africa from a point of view of someone who is not affiliated with any organization, is just an individual, yes. and we want to convert that person into an editor first and then into an affiliate member. It doesn't always work like that, and we live, we, we, we exactly, and we, we, we are living out a lot of professionals who would be actually working in their own organizations, don't want to be affiliated, they're already working in the organization, and this is part of their job, yeah. and I think this is covering that gap, which yes, is exactly. what we really need to, to get at. There are people who are probably not going to be interested in doing the other stuff that we do in affiliates and in community work but have got the access to content and to archives and to all the knowledge that we need and just need that spark in terms of the technology they can use to get that into our projects exactly and i think this this really covers that gap so well done thank you so much to me and thank you all for coming and listening and contributing and thank you for the time <laughs> <laughs>